Hey there ladies and gents, welcome back to the vlog and welcome to episode number one of Ask Drew Anything, a series where I answer your questions about computer science and other stuff. So today's question comes from Bella P who says, congrats for graduating. Thanks Bella. I'm going to start my senior year of CS next week, computer science next week, so no homework yet in parentheses, but definitely when you start getting it, let me know Bella, I'll be happy to help you out with it. But a concern that always comes up is what to do next, work or grad school. I noticed that going to grad school is not a very popular option amongst my classmates, doesn't surprise me, and I know you mentioned going to grad school in one of your previous videos. So I was wondering what, you were, what your considerations were before deciding that you wanted to go to grad school. Thanks Drew, no problem. I appreciate your videos. I appreciate you watching them, Bella, and that is an excellent question and one that has been asked in the comment threads uh, couple different times and I figured it was be it would be great to do just one whole video over it. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to answer the age-old question of should I go to computer science grad school? And the way that I approach this question is partially my opinion and then partially the opinion of some of the professors that I talked to when I was considering grad school myself. Now it's worth noting that I'm not actually a grad student of computer science, at least not yet. I plan to go back at some point but for all intents and purposes, I've made the preparations to go to grad school and I'm somewhat cognizant, at least at this present moment, of how to go about it and what little gaps I didn't have, I had filled in by professors who obviously teach the courses at the grad level and do research and have PhD and master's students under them. So culminating those two points, my own anecdotes and the anecdotes of my professors, I feel like we can get a pretty concise answer to this question. So the first Thing you'll want to ask yourself is why? Why do you want to go to computer science grad school? Do you want to do research? Do you want to be a professor? Do you just want to make more money? Whatever your reasoning is, just make sure that you have some kind of reason for going to grad school because inevitably you made it through your undergrad coursework or some sort of undergraduate program and now you're pursuing graduate work. So you know what it's like to spend four to five years of your life studying something and you know that motivation is a big part of it. So Asking why and having a motivation to go to grad school is a very important thing to consider. The next question is where? Where do you want to go to grad school? And where you go is not nearly as important as what you know. A master's or PhD is difficult no matter where you go and any cognizant employer is going to understand that. So I think a lot of people Especially when you're an undergrad, you kind of get caught up in the glitz and glamour of some of the bigger schools like Stanford, MIT, Caltech, Berkeley. So those are really, really great schools with really, really great endowments and really, really great research that's going on there. But inevitably, at the end of the day, most all of our degrees are going to say computer science. And to some degree, we're all going to have some semblance of computer science as long as you went to a accredited university and an accredited program. So that's why I say that what you learn is far more important than where you learn it. Secondly, a good thing to do, especially, and this is advice coming from one of my professors, is have a list of a couple of different schools that you want to go to. So have some shot in the dark schools. Those are the big glitzy glamour schools like Stanford, MIT, Caltech. Have those as kind of your moonshot schools. And maybe for some of you, it's very within reason. But I know for me, when I was planning to go to grad school, those were kind of my shot in the dark schools. But I knew that there were a couple different schools that I really, really wanted to go to, at least here in the state of Texas, like Texas A&M and UT Austin, UT Dallas, where I did my undergrad work, also has a really great computer science grad program. Have a list, find a list of maybe six or seven schools that you're interested in and that you'd be comfortable going to, and then go to their computer science research page or their computer science department page and see what the professors are working on. And if you find a professor that maybe is working on a research topic that you're interested in, like human computer interactions, algorithms, artificial intelligence, something like that, go and find that professor's published work. And part of being a professor is you have to turn out a certain number of publications every year, otherwise the department's gonna say, hey, what are you doing? We're giving you all this grant money, we're giving you the salary, you're not adding anything to your CV, so you need to publish some papers. So a lot of professors and their students or their fellows who are under them will write papers and submit them to different journals and things like that. So find two or three of their recent papers so that they, you know that it's fresh on their mind and then read them and see if you can email them and start a dialogue there. A lot of times professors are 
excited to talk about different things that they're working on. And if it's not the case that they directly worked on it, they can say, oh, my grad student so-and-so was working on that project. Connect with him and he can tell you more about it. But just opening that dialogue, not being forceful, not saying, please give me a fellowship, please give me a, a, a position in your lab now, now please. But opening that dialogue, starting to talk to them and getting to know them and what they're really working on and what their lab is all about. And from that, you can kind of gauge, okay, is the professor a new professor? And are they taking on research students to help better their case for tenure? Or are they tenured currently and they're not really taking on students? So you kind of want to put some feelers out there and figure out who it is you want to work with because you're going to be working very closely under them for the next four years doing your research. So it's worth doing a little bit of research not only into the school, but the professors within that school and what they're working on find some of their publications, read about them, get a dialogue open, and even if you don't end up going to that school, you still have like somebody you can talk to in the field, and maybe if you're working on HCI at one school and you're, you had a dialogue with another professor at another school, you can get their input and possibly have them look at some of your work and that sort of thing, get a second opinion, that sort of thing. And in the case that you are considering that school, then you're just that much step ahead because you now have an open dialogue and an open rapport with one of the professors and they can possibly make a case for you if you are considering admission there or they can let you know what the admission process looks like from their school or their department's point of view. The next question you want to ask is, when do you want to go to grad school? And I think you guys might be noticing a theme here. When, where, why? So we're answering those big questions and really kind of gauging at a higher level why it is that you want to go to grad school and all those things. So when should you go to grad school? The earlier the better in my opinion. The reason for it is money. money. If you start working go. and you're gonna start making some of the big bucks because inevitably you're now a trained professional computer scientist and people are willing to pay pretty good money for your services, it's gonna be ridiculously hard to take the pay cut and go back to school for a couple years. So if you can get it done in all one swoop go through your undergrad and then go straight into graduate school, even better. But if you need to take some time off, do it earlier in your career because obviously then you won't be bogged down with work or with kids or with a family commitment. You don't have to bring home the bacon or be the breadwinner in the family. Not saying that that's everybody's condition, but inevitably the more that time marches on, the more and more responsibility you take on. So it's better to attack these things when you're a little bit younger. And that's my opinion as well as some of my other professors' opinions. But the money is the big part. I've had professors tell me it's super hard to go back to academia after taking uh, a couple paychecks and getting the good money from working. So finally, or actually second to finally, last, I don't know what you would call second to finally, but I'm gonna say second to finally. How? How do you go to grad school? What do you need to do now in order to better your chances to get into grad school? And this is a big one. First and foremost, in your undergrad, make the best grades that you can. It goes without saying, but a GPA of 3.0 or higher is generally required for grad school, and a 3.5 or above is a safe bet for a lot of PhD programs. So if you're wanting to do grad school, you've got to cut the grade as an undergrad. So make the best grades that you can, and in the classes that you maybe don't make the best grade in, if you have time, retake them for a better grade. A lot of schools will allow you to retake and then the final grade or the better grade will show on your transcript as credit for that course so you can bump your GPA up a little bit. And secondly, get some research experience if you can. Oftentimes professors will offer spots to high scoring students in their lecture classes. I remember I got a position at a lab at UTD when I took HCI2. The professor who was teaching that class was offering research opportunities in the summer, unpaid obviously because I'm an undergrad. but. I, it was still great. I ended up working with that professor for about three semesters and we worked on some really cool stuff and I got to put that on my resume and he is now one of my references. So I can use him for both professional references and academic references. So when I go back to grad school, he will write me a reference. So get some undergrad research experience if you can, get to know research professors, what the research process looks like. And if you can get a publication or two because publications are great and they look awesome on a CV when you're submitting to grad school because Inevitably, when you go to grad school, you're going to be doing research. So if you've already done it, then you're just that much further and closer to your goal. Actually, that was a contradiction. You're just that much further along and you're that much closer to your goal. That's what I was meaning to say. 
have some personal projects or keep a repository of all your code that you do bigger projects for somewhere online. So I remember I have a couple repositories open. I worked on some different group projects in some of my junior and senior level classes. I know I did a computer networks project that's on a public repo on GitHub. Actually, now I think about it, I think it's private actually. But um, if it's public, I'll definitely link it. But having a repository where you can literally say, hey, check out my GitHub, look at all this cool stuff that I worked on in my undergrad, or look at all this cool stuff that I'm working on outside of class, that helps a lot because that shows that you're not just kind of a stuffy academic type and you're only about theory. You can actually sling the code and you can give it to the world and have it be open for scrutiny and be available to people to edit and change and have comments on because that's essentially what academia is or that's what research is. You'll do research, you'll publish a paper, it'll go under peer review and then you'll take that peer review or say, hey, this looks like an opportunity for your future work, then you do research, then you publish it, then it goes through peer review. It's just a continual cycle. So putting your work out and having a repository of your work for public scrutiny is a good tool to have. And it just looks good on your resume to be able to link to your GitHub and have whoever's looking at it look at all your cool code. So we made it through why, we made it through where, we made it through when, and we made it through how. And there's just one final question, and coincidentally, or actually kind of humorously, it's not actually what, it is, how do you approach a problem that really doesn't have a documented answer? And <laughs> like I said, that's a little bit more long-winded than what, but the reason I ask this is because when you're doing research or you're doing ground-level coursework, oftentimes you'll have a problem set or some sort of problem that you're working on and it is right on the cusp of known computer science. That's why it's called research. You're diving into territory that has previously been undiscovered. So I remember in my undergrad classes, I had one class, Advanced Algorithms, and it was probably the most theoretical computer science course that I ever took, but I remember doing problem sets for that class and <laughs> I would try and find my normal resources, you know, Stack Overflow, Google, that sort of thing, and surprise, surprise, there is no concrete answer for the question that I'm looking at. And I can only imagine that's what grad school feels like. So you have to be able to kind of humble yourself and say, okay, I can't find this answer right away, or this answer is not documented. I am not gonna freak out. I'm gonna rise to the challenge and see, okay, what prior art is there, and what other answers can I use to synthesize an answer to this question? So. If you're going to go into grad school, you kind of have to be humble and you kind of have to have thick skin and realize that a lot of these questions won't have their answers be directly documented or well researched yet, hence why it's called research. So don't freak out. Uh, it's not because you're stupid. It's not because you just aren't good at finding answers. It is literally because there is no answer to be had at the moment and that is why you are researching it or why you are working on it. So. And that's my one final piece that I've gotten from professors as well, and just some anecdotal evidence from classes that I've taken as well. So thank you so much, Bella. This was an amazing question, and I'm sure a lot of people will benefit from it. I hope you guys did, and you enjoyed the kind of line of questioning and gave you some insight into if you want to go to grad school or not. So we will wrap up today's video. As always, friends, I will end in the traditional way, and that is by saying that always remember that you are wanted, you are loved, and you are appreciated. You have a special talent that nobody else has, and the world is waiting on you to bring it out. So muster a little courage, go out into the world, and change it. That's what the world's waiting on. You. Hey there, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate you giving me a little bit of time out of your day. If you liked the video, leave a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, leave a thumbs down. I learn just as much from the dislikes as I do from the likes. And if you want to continue the conversation, leave a comment down below. You can talk about just about anything from cat videos on to computer science questions or whatever is weighing on your minds. And if you want to follow me on social media, I've got links to my various social medias. I would love it if we could connect on those platforms and you can keep track of me and what I've been up to outside of the YouTube realm and possibly get a sneak peek into projects that I'm working on before they air here on YouTube. Thank you so much, guys, for watching the video again, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take it easy.